What up? What up? What up? Who's ready for day two? Thomas, what's up, man? Make sure to change your chat settings to everyone. That way everyone can enjoy reading your wonderful messages. We'll get started in here in just a minute or two. Before we get started, I want to know what you guys and gals and everyone in between want uh, want to learn today. Post in the chat. What's the number one thing you want, want to learn? You're hoping to learn today? And I'll see if I can deliver on the goods for you. Sam, welcome. I think Sam just signed up today for this. Sam will be getting started in just a couple minutes here. And make, say, make sure to change your chat settings, Sam, to everyone. Currently, it's set to hosts and panelists. But everybody wants to see your messages and chats. Thomas wants more resources. Oh, man, I am the king of resources. I have a document for everything, bro. I have a document and a link for nearly everything. And if I don't have a document or a link for something and somebody wants something and it's actually, I think it could be useful for everyone, I just create it. Kelly wants to learn retention. Cool. Edith, figuring out exactly what to offer in a community membership to make it valuable enough. Great question. Great question. Cool. Yeah, that's always an interesting one. I think uh, I think the secret with that, Edith, is asking yourself, what is the single deliverable? What is the one deliverable that I can give people that would make it worth X amount of dollars per month? Because I think a lot of us think in terms of like a value stack, an offer stack, right? Like a list of things we can give them. And I then I think a lot of those things on the list just kind of suck. But if you just ask yourself, what's the one thing that people would be willing to pay for? And anything else on top of that is just bonus. It makes it a lot easier. So for us, we did a survey. We ran a poll. And we asked you guys, not maybe not necessarily you guys, but we asked our uh, you know, 200 members at the time. Hey, if we were to remove everything in this membership, except for one thing, what would be the one thing that you'd want to keep and everything else has to get removed? Do you know what they said? The one thing they want to keep? Any guesses? The live calls, the small group coaching calls. All right, there we are. Hi, if you're wondering why my face is so shiny, it's because my friend, uh, my friend, I met this, I met this gal, I met this lady. Uh, where did I meet her? Online, I guess. Instagram, maybe. And we started talking, and then I found out she's local. She's from like just an hour away. Then we ended up hanging out and her face was always like so shiny and so glowy. It's like, what's your skincare routine? And so she told me, and now every morning I do her skincare routine. Um, and she's actually like, watch this. This is so wild. If you go to payhip.com, payhip's like a really big company. She's on the freaking front page. That's her, Crystal. Look at her face. It's shiny right there. Look at that perfect skin. In fact, go to payhip.com right now and just zoom in on her skin. You can see how clear it is. So I'm on Crystal's skincare routine every morning, which is why my face is so shiny. Uh, but yeah, that the the single most attractive deliverable for people is typically the uh, the live coaching calls. This could be workshops. This could be small Q and A, small group Q and A. Yeah. Uh, how often do you go live in the membership and tips for doing them? Yeah, it's a good question. That's a good question. I, I I go I go overkill as you guys know. We do like for for inside content printers right now for forty seven bucks a month, 
we do three to four calls. Well, this week it's three to five calls, uh, but typically three to four calls every single week for 47 bucks a month. Like that's, that's wild. Most people I'd recommend one call a week, maybe even one call every two weeks, depending on how successful you already are. So what, what, what I promised when, when people joined um, contentpreneurs is that I would do a live call every other week. But for the first, and plus my coaches would do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But for the first like three, four months, I did a call every single week just to just to over deliver and just because I love doing them and just to stack assets. Like, as you guys know, you go to the workshops section in the, in the program, I have, well, I have a workshop for everything. So every problem someone's already experienced or every desire somebody has, I already have a workshop for that. Multiple in some cases. So going live, don't look at it like a, like you're just doing it for the ephemeral moment, right? It's just, it's like, it's not like an Instagram story where you go live and you give a lot of value and it's gone forever. No, it's like you do it and it's up forever. It's a good, it's a proper asset that you can use forever and you can sell it in the future too. Like every workshop I've ever done, I could now go out and send an email and say, Hey guys, I've recorded this workshop. You can buy it for 20 bucks. And I could probably sell every single workshop I have in there for 20 bucks each easily, just the replays and have enough products to sell for the rest of my life, you know? So when you're doing these weekly workshops or bi-weekly workshops or, or, or monthly workshops, whatever, however, however frequently you do them, just know that you're building something really valuable and you'll be able to sell for potentially the rest of your life, depending on how timeless the information is. Cool. The, the skincare routine, yeah, it's, uh, I'll tell it to you right now. There's three things. There's three things I take every morning on the, on the skin. It is as follows. Here it is. Okay. So I take a vitamin C serum. Uh, I'll post the links later. Maybe if you really want vitamin C serum. And then after the vitamin C it's vitamin C and E. And then after that, I, I use something called a man, mandelic acid. And then after that, it's mandelic acid plus nicotinamide. Or no, niacinamide. I'll post links. And then the final thing is uh, argon oil. 100% pure organic argon oil. Argon oil. The shine is crazy. Yeah, and before this Zoom, I had to like take it off like less lessen it because it was like way shinier normally i had to uh de-shine because it, it was like blinding for you guys so i i de-shined a bit but yeah it's like my face is like a fucking bowling ball okay let's get into it now mm, i think we've given enough time for people to arrive got some quick little q a in there today i've got some awesome stuff planned hi crystal Okay, so yesterday, for those of you who didn't show up yesterday, go back and watch the replay. Uh, I, I sent it out via, via email to some of you and then to everyone else. It's, it's in the school community already. So yesterday we went over the power of community and monthly recurring revenue. Why you have to understand that. The big picture overview of making 510k a month without actually selling anything. That was a big aha for a lot of you guys. Picking your community topic. Honing in on your niche, the best platform, acquiring new members, how to actually get new members. And now today we're going to be talking about how do you keep those members and how do you manage the community in a way that doesn't take up a lot of your time or require a lot of content, how to get your first 10 paying members and the roadmap to getting your first 200 members in 365 days. So let's get into it. First things first, the retention tactics. There are so many different retention tactics that I've studied. Here are 25. I think I, I think I said 25, but there might even be, uh, there's, there's, there's one more that I, there's one more. I'll give you one more at the end. Bonus mystery tactic. I'll share this one at the end. So let's go through these. I'll go through them pretty quickly because I don't think they that, need that much explaining, but 
you want to break up your content so that members don't get overwhelmed. So five to 10 minute video modules with short bits of homework, as opposed to what I used to do. I used to just give people like, I swear to God, what I did one time is I recorded an entire course live, like I'm doing right now. I recorded it. It was like six hours long and there was like bathroom breaks in there and everything, but still it was like a six hour long video. And I just uploaded that. And I was like, all right, there's the course, go for it. And you know, that makes sense from like a production point of view. It's very efficient, like product production wise, just film it for six hours. Boom, done. There it is. It's one video for you. So one link is all you need. Sounds good. But no, turns out the human mind doesn't like that. The human mind loves little milestones. So you can actually get, it, it makes it much easier for people to get through it if it's actually like a bunch of little videos, which is why YouTube shorts are so popular. So if we go to school and we look at what I did inside the free group right here, you'll see all these different videos have been broken up into five minutes, six minutes, three minutes, right? So I, I, I recorded it all at once as well, but then I, I hired an editor to chop it all up for me. Three minutes, three minutes, five minutes, five minutes, one minute, two minutes. So people go through this, so they, they can make, as they go through it, the mark is done and it's progress. Boom, done, progress. Okay, boom, done, done. So this sense of progress right here makes them feel like, wow, I'm getting some. So this is the first tactic that I recommend. Don't just give people a massive bunch of content, break it up. And this is an issue that I've experienced with uh, these workshop replays because you guys come into the, the classroom here, you go to the, the workshops and then you look at the Dream 100 workshop, you're like, it's an hour and 25 minutes. How am I going to get through that? Or you look at effortless content creation. It's like an hour and a half. How am I going to get through that? And so this is an issue. Like this is a two hour freaking workshop. And so it's so easy mentally to put that off. Like I'll do that later. I'll do that later. I'll do that later. And type a one in the chat. If you've ever said, I'll do that later. And you never did it. Like that's brutal. And uh, type a two in the chat. If you have like a hundred videos on your watch later playlist that you're probably never going to watch. Yeah. Like, that's not good. That's really not good. And the reason for that probably is because the video is so freaking long. But I bet you this as well. You probably also don't have any one minute, two minute videos on your watch later playlist. Right? They're always like these longer videos that we put off. So if you can find a way to, if you can find a way to, break up your content into very small bite-sized chunks. I'll even say two to I'll even say one to 10 minute videos. People will get through it a lot easier. And as they get through it, they'll make progress. And when they make progress, they stick around. Okay. So chunking content actually helps with retention because people use it. The, 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 the bottom line with retention, you guys, you got to understand is that people will retain if they use your product, or in this case, it's a community. So people will retain if they use the community, if they, if they participate in the community, if they enter the community, people will stay. Like, would you pay for Spotify if you didn't use it? No. Would you pay for Netflix if you didn't use it? No. Would you pay for a gym membership if you didn't use it? Yeah, you would. Statistics show you would pay for a gym membership even if you didn't use it. That's one exception. But community, people will only pay for your community if they use it. So how do you get them to use it? Get them to make progress. Easiest way to get them to make progress is make your modules very, very short. Cool, done. Next, give members an identity. So think of a label you can give them. So for our community, we call them contentpreneurs. Uh, Lady Gaga, what does she call her people? Little monsters, right? Like there's a lot of influencers who have names for their audience members. Can you guys think of any examples? Post in the chat if you have any other examples. Believers, exactly. Yeah, Justin Bieber fans are called believers. 
And they identify as, oh, uh, if, you, if you're into like uh, ClickFunnels, ClickFunnels is a software. Russell Brunson calls ClickFunnels users funnel hackers. Funnel hackers. So give your members an identity. That way they feel part of the community. Um, at the Woodstock Fruit Festival, we were called fruitarians. You know, it felt really good to be in this group of 600 other fruitarians. We have a label. And I think that's a, that's, yeah, it's, it's very, very powerful because we all want to feel included. We all want to feel part of a tribe, right? But it's hard to know if you're a part of something, if you don't even have a label for yourself, right? But if I call Thomas a contentpreneur, and then I have a community called contentpreneurs, where is he going to go? Like, where, uh, there's no other contentpreneurs community, Right. So this tactic alone, is a, it's an interesting psychological one. It's like, if, if I get you all to believe that you are a contentpreneur, why would you leave contentpreneurs? It's like the only place on the internet that you can be, right? And you notice how I, I, I made the free one not identity-based. This is contentpreneurship.com. It's just like what the idea was contentpreneurs is what the identity. Yeah. So think, what identity can you give members? That one's huge. Next is send out physical gifts for top contributors slash winners of contests. So you could give prizes to people on your leaderboards. Like every 30 days, for example, you could give it a prize. I should probably send uh, Stefania a prize. I should send Stuart a prize. I should send Metalli a prize. Top three people send them a prize every month. Boom. What? Why would they leave if they're getting a prize every month? You know, it doesn't even have to be the the top thirty people. It could be it could be the top uh, top ten, the top ten of the thirty, or the top ten of the seven days. You know, like in fact, it'd probably be more effective to give a prize to the seven day leaderboard because this changes way more frequently. So if you give prizes to these people, like why would Ashley leave if she's getting prizes for participating? You know. So far, out of these first three, do you guys think that these first three retention tactics would work for you? Like, do you think they would cause people to be a bit more sticky inside your community and not leave? Yeah? Okay, cool. Well, we only covered the first three. There's 22 more. 23 more, actually. I got a bonus one. Next is to gamify your membership so that members can level up and unlock new rewards. This one's so interesting. So I was a part of WeTube. I'm a part of WeTube and and uh, in the leaderboards to get to level to to unlock Quantum. Quantum is a is a, or was a mastermind held by Sam Ovens, and it was thirty six thousand dollars a year to attend, to be part of. And every year, twice a year, they got together in person and they held a mastermind, a live in person mastermind, and they recorded it. And this is like, it's like some really good discussions that go on here because everyone in the room, everyone in the room is making like over, over hundred K a month, probably like that's average over hundred K a month, easy. And they're all discussing the latest and greatest tips and tricks and strategies and mindsets and hacks on how they level up their business. And they're all asking each other questions and sharing really, really, really good advice. And so that those recordings are normally like I mean, he doesn't even sell them to get the recording. You have to pay 36 grand or you could get to level six and unlock the recordings. So what do you think I did when I joined WeTube? I was like, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to get level six. And so I went super hard to get level six and I just engaged, 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 and engaged, engaged in the community till I got to level six. Now that I got it though, I'm like, I don't use the community at all because there's nothing else for me to unlock. Again, look at 0% of members at level seven. None of us. We got what we wanted and we stopped. So what I recommend is in your leaderboards, get people to unlock things when they level up and make it really, really cool. So when you get to level seven here, you get private one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. I should probably make, I should probably make a, Oh, I'm missing something on level six. I need level six and I need level eight and nine. And I should probably make level seven seem a bit more 
attractive. But uh, as you can see here, I've unlocked things here. So when you get to level four, you guys get to unlock these interviews I did with some awesome plant-based entrepreneurs. This uh, Adele, Graham, Dr. Rick and Karen Dina, Jamie, Kyle, Dusty and Aaron, Sanzik, Ariel, Darian Ryder, John Venus when he was vegan. I don't know if he's vegan anymore. I don't think he is. And then part two, it's a really good interviews of like asking them all the behind the scenes of their business and how they became successful and the advice they have for other people. So good stuff. But gamify your thing, gamify your community so that people can level up and unlock stuff. That really helps. Next, help members make tangible progress within hours of joining. So this is why we recommend creating a quick start program, a quick start course for your, for your members. I, I read a book called Retention Point. Very good book, but you don't need to read it because I'm going to tell you the whole secret of the book right here. I'm going to save you a lot of time. You could read it still, but the premise of the book, it's called The Single Biggest Secret to Membership and Subscription Growth. Do you know what the single biggest secret is? The single biggest secret, I'll tell you right now, so you don't need to read the book, but you can if you want. The single biggest secret is to get members to make progress right away. That's it right there. As soon as they join, you want to have an awesome onboarding process. So tangible progress. So what we get our members to do is text a friend or family member right away and say, hey, can I coach you for free? I need some experience. I want to, I want to practice. Everyone who does this, they're like, holy crap, I got a beta client. So for you, you're going to have to think like, what tangible progress can I help somebody make within hours of joining? If you got a weight loss program, maybe your quick start challenge is getting them to throw out every piece of gluten and dairy in the house. Throw in the garbage. Get, get a trash bag and fill the trash bag with gluten and dairy. Maybe that's it. Get them to do something that's actually helpful. Not like mentally think of like your dream body or something, but like go and do something physical. Make, make things happen. Next is create a real sense of community where people feel like they belong. So this, you can do this with, by hopping on zoom calls. You can do this by having even in-person meetups. There's, there's a few things you can do to make this happen, but I think zoom calls are one and, um, you have themed Zoom calls, not just a random Q&A Zoom call, but like dinner night, movie night. Like, would you guys, just curious, would you guys be open for doing movie night one time? Where we like, come on and we all watch the same movie together. And we like have our webcams on and we like eat some fruit or popcorn or whatever. And we're all watching a movie. Yeah. Anna, what's up? You got to change your chat settings to everyone, not just hosts and panelists. Yeah, cool. Movie night. That would create a sense of community, right? Know your members by name. This one, this one's seems minor, but it's uh, it's very, it's very important. If you don't know someone by name, they don't really feel like you know them. So get to know people's name and say their name. Like when I say Trevor's name, his ears perk up. <laughs> and this thing is a quote by Dale Carnegie. He says. The sweetest sound to someone is their own name. Sweetest sound is hearing their own name. Trevor. Trevor's like, ah, oh. he's getting the tingles all over. It's like ASMR for him. So this is like a, it gets, it's like, it's this weird psychological thing, but it's just, it is what it is. It's human nature. You can either go against human nature or you can go with it. I recommend going with it. You say the person's name, they're less likely to leave. Fascinating. Have awesome weekly, monthly deliverables that make it hard to live without and help members make progress. So again, a monthly or weekly Zoom call that provides a lot of value for them by helping them overcome their struggles and get closer to their desires. Create an anticipation pipeline for the future and remind them of it often. 
So we're overdue for our next anticipation pipeline, but I'll show you what this looks like. These were so fun to make. Um, let's go on Canva. Let's go workshop. Uh, where was it? Let me find this. Is it here? Um, anticipation pipeline. I know I have a link for this. Sometimes it's hard to find stuff in Canva. One sec, I will find it. An anticipation pipeline is basically a... I'll just show you this picture, whatever. I don't want to spend time looking for the other one, but something like this, where you say, hey, here's the roadmap, here are the dates ahead, and here's what we're going to do. Here's the, here's the workshop. September, we're going to do membership growth masterclass, million dollar daily habits, effortless content creation, wealth manifesting, seven steps, 10K months. You get the idea. And then here's another example. First one we ever created. As you go through, then you check them off. And then every week you have something to promote, something to announce, something to email out. But my favorite one is roadmap. That's the word. Here we go. It's my favorite one. Share my screen. Let me know if you want the template for this. Just type template in the uh, Zoom chat. I'll send you the template. This is my favorite one. Bam. Yeah, right there. Change the name. Content. There's workshop roadmap. Bam. So nice. So the way to do this, by the way, is you might be like, how do we come up with all these freaking ideas for workshops, Ted? Well, like I told you yesterday, you come up with a big list, like I do a minimum, like 11 things people really want, 11 things people really don't want. And then you come up with different workshop title ideas that help them get those things. So camera confidence, people want that. Or what they don't want is they don't want to feel like they suck on camera. Perfect sales flow. People are confused, like how does stuff like flow? How do you go? How do you, how do you acquire a customer? Mini workshop magic. People don't know how to host workshops. I did a workshop on that. Uh, effortless focus and consistency. People are like I don't know where to focus. I'm overwhelmed. Or they're like I can't stay consistent. Boom. Effortless focus and consistency workshop. I want to make 10k months with clients. Cool. Manifesting clients 10k months. People are like my morning routine sucks, or I just see that their morning routine sucks. I say morning routines of successful entrepreneurs. People are like, I don't know how to make an offer. So I'm like, okay, we're going to create an offer together in 30 minutes. 30 minute offer creation bootcamp. Bam. Just like that. So since you all want a template, I'll give you a template. Template link, copy. I think uh, Thomas wanted some resources. Thomas, your wish is my command. Here's a resource for you. Bam. I'll put this in the show notes for anyone who gets the document afterwards. Template for pipeline. Cool. That is a retention tactic because now when people see, people see this, they're like, I can't leave. I can't unsubscribe because look what's coming. I need that camera confidence class. And I also can't leave because I need this focus and consistency class. So if you make these attractive enough, people can't leave. And I recommend putting like some of the most juicy stuff at the end. You want to put like something that's super helpful right away at the start, like progress. So there's a pro membership growth. This is like to the T membership growth masterclass. This will get you making progress right away. So will million dollar daily habits, right? That you instantly get some benefit from that like right away. Very tangible. You're going to do something different 
throughout the day and you're gonna start growing your membership. And then at the end of the roadmap, I put something that people like really, really want, which is like membership retention secrets. Cause people, by this point, the members are gonna be unsubscribing. So I'm like, hey, here's how to fix that. And then people are like, I wanna get way more leads coming in. So I'm like, okay, new Facebook ad strategy revealed for getting more leads. So this is like kind of how you wanna frame it up. Instant progress at the start of the roadmap. And then something very, very, very attractive at the end of the roadmap. But they should all be attractive. Okay. Check in with quiet members and see how they're doing and what they need help with. You can get a virtual assistant, pay them six bucks an hour to do this for you. Um, and interesting story about this one. I paid five grand a month for three months in a row. So it was like a $15,000 program for some coaching that I didn't really use. I, I used it for maybe like a couple hours, not much at all. And after the first month, I was going to unsubscribe. Cause I'm like, why am I paying another five grand and then another five grand for that? If I'm not even using it. Right. But every time I thought about unsubscribing and hitting them up and be like, yo, I want to cancel. They would check in with me and they would say, Hey, Ted need anything from us or Hey, Ted, can I help you with anything? Like, that was it. That's all I did. And every time they did that, I felt bad. And I was like, Oh, I can't cancel now. Cause they're like, they're, they're, they're there for me. And so I kept paying I ended up paying the full 15 grand because of this tactic right here. They checked in with me and they're like, Hey man, can I help you with anything? And I was like, wow, can't unsubscribe now. So this is a very, very, very powerful one. Okay. So we've covered 10 so far, which of the 10 is your favorite and yes or no. Do you think, that these will help you make your community much more sticky for people. Curious to know your answers. Which is your favorite so far? Six and seven. Breaking up the videos and so on was the very first one. Cool. The roadmap. Cool. Yeah. Either thing number eight. Yeah. The thing is like, if you just use one of these tactics, it'll be helpful. But I really think you want to try and use them all. Like if you use them all, your community is just like, they're, they're like, they're so stuck in it. There's no way they can leave. Because you're, you're, you're tapping into all these psychological factors. So, yeah, we'll talk about uh, some more good, really good ones here. Next is, this is a game changer. This is a freaking game changer. I'd say 40% of the people or more, but about 40% who go to cancel end up pausing because we offer to pause. This is huge. And when they pause, it auto resumes like 30 or 60 or 90 days later. Offer to pause the membership rather than canceling. That is a killer retention tactic. Works extremely well. This, I don't do this one, but uh, inner, some, some high end masterminds do this. What, like Russell Brunson from ClickFunnels does this. He says, if you join my mastermind, it's like 50 or 100 grand a year, or whatever. If you leave, you can't rejoin. It's for life. It's an annual fee. So you could consider doing that. I mean, there's no reason why you can't. You could call, you know, it's kind of like a family. You can't like, you know, I mean, some families have that rule. It's like, if you leave the family, you can't go like, probably like the, the who's that guy that just left, left the freaking British family or he didn't want to be part of the royal family anymore. I don't think they can come back into the royal family now. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. I don't know. He just wrote a book. You guys probably know. I don't know. Harry or Henry or something. The prince. Maybe you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Some dude left like the British family. I think Prince Harry. There we go. And uh, now he can't come back. Or I doubt he can come back. Um, 
Thomas is saying, can I get someone to do that for me? I'm not sure what you mean by that, Thomas. Get someone to do what for you? Uh, the pause feature. Um, that's something. Mm, no, you have to do that on your end. Um, we, we just get people to fill out a job form when they go to cancel. And one of the questions on the job form is like, are you sure you want to cancel or would you rather pause instead? If they click pause, our team has to go in and pause them manually. They can't pause themselves. That's not a feature yet. But hopefully in the very near future, school will allow us to do that. In fact, yeah, um, I'm working with the school billing team right now on, on that feature. And I'm going to message them right now and be like, hey, can you make sure to let us pause our members? Can we uh, can we give members an option to pause instead of canceling? Members opt to pause to cancel. I'm giving you a chance. Cool. I just let them know. Thank you for that. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Uh, so let me share my screen again. Some more tactics for you. You can offer them a one time chance, lifetime discount if they stay. We don't do this, but I've seen other people do this. I am not a fan of this because to me, it's like, like, yeah, I don't, I don't like this. Cause if let's say I'm paying 47 bucks a month. Right. And then I think that's the price. And then I go and leave and they're like, wait, don't leave. You can get it for 27 a month. I'm like, wait, then why was I paying 47? So I don't like that, but I've seen other people do that. And I, I know, know it gets results. Mm. Or you could offer like a, you know, something alternative to this is you could offer them a free month instead. I'd probably rather do that. Be like, Hey, don't leave. We'll give you a free month instead. Like, I'd be, I'd be much more open to doing that, but I wouldn't give them a discount. Um, another one is to reach back out to members once they leave and offer them a rejoin discount or rejoin bonus to let them know about new features and releases. This is sweet. So let's say after a year, you wouldn't do this frequently, but after a year or something, or after six months, you reach out to everyone who left and say, hey, we got a bunch of new features. We got a bunch of new functionality. We got a bunch of new calls or a bunch of new resources for you. If you want to rejoin, we'll give you a, you know, 30 day free trial or something. That'd be cool. Um, this one works well as well, which is letting members know that the price has gone up or is going up. So if they leave, the price is never going to be as low as it is right now. This is why I was saying yesterday, I think John asked, Ted, why do you recommend starting the price so low at like seven or 14 bucks or something? It's because everyone who joins at seven or 14 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever, when you raise the price to 25 or 30 or 35 or 40 or 47 or 49, whatever, they're not going to want to leave because then they're going to have to join back and pay more. So just raising your price acts as a retention tactic. And whenever someone does leave, you got to make sure you let them know that, hey, if you leave, you're never going to get the same price that you got. This might sound surprising, but it works, which is create an actual relationship with your members. Like actually, like I said earlier, know them by name. Now this is tough as the membership grows. If you're trying to get like a big membership, but you can, if you have 200 solid members, like, like, do you guys think you could retain a, a actual relationship, genuine relationship online with like 200 people? Probably right. Like you could know all 200 people by name, especially over the course of a year as you accumulate members. So if you have an actual relationship with these 200 members, it makes it very difficult for them to leave. Another one, this is what like Google does really well, and Apple does this really well, is they make it a pain in the ass to leave by holding and storing their assets. So a great example of this is like a CRM. So I have a software that I sell. It's highly it's freaking awesome. I highly recommend it. Um, it it helps you make so many more sales, it helps us make so many sales with our in our company. It's called Genius CRM. 
And if you try and leave Genius here, I mean, you could definitely do it. But if you try and leave, like your whole pipeline's in here, like all of your contacts are in it, right? So I'll send you guys this link. You check it out. But it allows you to organize your Facebook DMs to know where everyone's at in the pipeline. Like, have do they have any money or do they not have money? Um, have they already got on a phone call with you? Have they not got a phone call? Are you supposed to follow up with them or... Are they already a customer? Are they a past customer? Are they not a good fit? Should you should you delete them? Are they a friend and family member? So as you get really organized with all your DMs, but if you then go and cancel that, you lose all that data. So now your inbox is like blank. So it doesn't, that's not necessarily a pain in the ass, but like you're losing something like really, really valuable because it's holding your assets, which is labels. So that's a retention tactic. Like, even if something better than Google Drive came out, I wouldn't switch because everything I have is already on Google Drive. And I know a lot of people will never leave Apple because everything they have is in the Apple ecosystem, right? They use i iPhotos or whatever Apple uses. Yeah. Um, this tactic is when people survey people and ask them why they're leaving and create a list of all the reasons. So... This tactic, it might not prevent people from leaving in the moment, but it'll give you so much data as to why they're leaving that you can then go and prevent it in the future. So for example, let's say let's say the majority of people or a lot of people when they go to leave, they they say they're leaving because um, they're saying leaving because now is not a good time, right? Now is not a good time. That's what I found. I found out that most people were saying now is not a good time. That's why I started when people go to pause, I say, hey, is now not a good time? Maybe in the next 90 days, things will be very different for you if that's the case. And if that's the case, how about you just pause for 90 days instead? And they're like, yeah, totally. Now's not a good time. 90 days will be much better. Boom, pause. So when you understand why people are leaving, you can speak their language. And then when you offer a solution, like a pause, it's in alignment with what they think and what they feel. So ask people why they're leaving, create a list, and then offer alternatives instead of canceling to actually stay. Same thing, ask people why they're staying and create a list. So this is kind of what we said earlier. We said like, what's the one feature? Uh, this actually I talked about this before the workshop even began, but I, I surveyed all my people. I said, hey, if we could eliminate all the features and just keep one, what would it be? And everyone said, they want to keep the coaching calls, the live Zoom calls. You can get rid of everything else, but keep the live Zoom calls. So, yeah, like that was huge. Uh, we've never actually surveyed them yet and asked them why they're staying. Like, hey, how come you haven't unsubscribed yet? But we should do that. That'd be amazing. Get a big list of that. Wow. And you can get more people to experience that. Because let's say maybe they say they haven't unsubscribed because they feel like they finally found their home right? Or if they're placed on the internet. If, if a lot of people say that and you can dig in a bit more and be like, hey, what makes this feel like a home for you? What makes this feel like proper community for you? And they might say, oh, people know me by name and we DM each other, blah, blah, blah. Then what you can do is you can facilitate things that get people to interact more. You can facilitate things to get people to DM each other, right? So you reverse engineer it. Like what's making you stay? And then whatever's making you stay, I'm going to try and get other people to experience that same thing. Survey people. Ask them why they're staying, create a list, and then implement those tactics. And then others have speedy and helpful customer support. This just requires, I found, just you have to hire someone full-time for this. Full-time customer support rep. Make referrals part of your culture too. Because if someone refers someone, it makes it harder for the... Let's say I refer you to join something. You're less likely to cancel now because... You don't want to let me down, but also you think highly of the thing you just joined because I just referred you to it. So even if you're thinking of canceling, you're like, well, Ted said it was really good. So I'm probably just missing something. Like I should stay and try it out. So a good example of this, this might be a weird example, but when I first tried durian, it was so gross. It was like super gross. Not good. I was so disappointed because it was so hyped up because I had heard so many people say, oh, durian's the best, durian's the best, durian's the best. But because I had so many people who referred me to durian, 
I didn't give up. And after my disgusting during experience, I went back in the store and I bought some more. And sure enough, it was really, really good. And I was like, oh my God, this is heaven. So that is the, uh, the durian method. Make referrals, part of your culture. People aren't going to want to leave. Plus, if you're giving someone commission, like referral commission, I'll say like, and give commission, then they really don't want to leave. Because if someone's like making, let's say a couple hundred bucks a month from referring people to your community, why would they leave your community if they're making a couple hundred bucks a month or more? Right? It's like part of their income now. This one's cool. Create a consumption guide to show users all the different ways to consume what's in your membership slash community. So I buy this guacamole. Sometimes it's called holy guacamole. I don't know if you guys ever tried it. It's pretty good. And on the package, it has a consumption guide. Look at this. It says dip it, top it, spread it, love it. It teaches you how to use it. You're like, oh, I never thought of that. I could actually dip it in. Oh, I never thought of that. I could use it to top it. Oh, I never thought of that. I could use it as a spread. I personally use it as like a salad dressing. So I guess I top it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like teaching people how to use it, all the different ways of using it. So that way when people just sign up, they're like, uh, what do I do? Oh, Sam, I asked, pause for how long? 30, 60, 90 days are the options. Most pick. Boom. Um, let's go here. We were saying here, classroom, when people first join, how this membership works. So I, I create a consumption guide on how to consume the community, community contents. But you can, this, this can be like, you don't even need to have this inside your community. You can have this outside your community. So before people even join as part of your marketing, you could be like, Hey, here's how you could use our community. And you could be used like this, you could use like that, you could use like this. Give people different ideas for how to use it. This one right here. So alter users' beliefs. I don't like the word user. Alter members' beliefs. So they believe that staying in the membership is actually beneficial for them. Convince them that the program you offer is worth way more than the money they're spending on it. Now, every time somebody goes and unsubscribes from contentpreneurs, I like want to facepalm because that because especially when I read the reason, sometimes people say like, oh, I'm cutting costs right now. I'm like you're cutting costs right now because money's short. Money's short because you're not applying what's in the community. It makes no sense to me. Or 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 they're like, they're like yeah, I'm just trying to save some money right now. Like, why are you trying to save money when you could be making more money? It's way easier to make more money and not have to worry about fucking scrimping and scrape, saving every little like penny, right? I'm like, if you just got one client by applying what's in this program and that client paid you 500 bucks, your whole year is paid for, you know? If you sell a high ticket program, which we teach you how to do, if you sell a high ticket program for 2,500 bucks, you never have to worry about a freaking $47 member experience, member uh, ship subscription ever again right so it, it but 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 i i can't tell them that once they've canceled right so i need to kind of get that across ahead of time in the videos or in the community posts whatever best part of the culture but you want to somehow alter the members beliefs and get them to believe that staying is actually beneficial for them because if they can't see that the program is worth more then what they're spending on it, then they're gonna they're gonna bounce. Now the way to do this is by applying a lot of what we've already talked about, right? If you just apply a lot of what we talked about, that will take care of itself. But you could also use like some case studies and stories. You could say something like, 
let's say you have a um, a marriage group, right? Or a relationship group. You could say, Sarah was thinking of, of leaving this membership because she still hadn't found any good dates on Tinder after two weeks. But after she went through module number three and she actually applied what we teach in module number three, which is updating your profile pictures to have better angles, Sarah was able to get a date and she went on to marry him just six months later, right? Like that's so inspiring. I just made that story up completely, but let's say it's true. That's so inspiring. I want to go through module three now. Oh, I can't get through module three. I need to, I need to level up first, right? And I can't unsubscribe now because Sarah was thinking of unsubscribing and I'm thinking of unsubscribing. So just give stories about people who are thinking of unsubscribing if you have stories like that. But stories are probably one of the easiest ways to alter members' beliefs. That's why the news uses stories all the time. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the news, like oftentimes they, they don't even like uh, cite statistics or something. They're just like, just like this man was out hiking and a, um, and a moose trampled him. So the next time you're outside, be careful of moose. You know, it's like, dude, that one dude got trampled by a moose. Then what are the statistical likelihood that's going to happen? Probably like 0.01%. But you're scared shitless of moose now because they told a story, right? So they altered your belief by telling you a story of this dude that got trampled by a moose. But the likelihood of that happening is so freaking small. So they do this all the time with all sorts of things. Because it works really, really well. And you can do it with a positive. Next is you can have your members create a peer led support group. So. What we have is not many people are utilizing it. I should probably promote it a bit more, but accountability partners. You can make a post in here and you can get an accountability partner. Look at this, Gary. Gary says, me and Teresa have been knocking it out in her study session. Boom, here's what we created. And he took, took a picture of what he created. Also, Gary posted into the celebrations saying, hey, I'm up to 10 members now in my membership. Like, he's also the guy using accountability. Is that a coincidence? No, he's actually doing stuff. So you can get your members to create a peer-led support group. Like, you could have your members create like a Zoom call, or you can get your members to do accountability calls or something. But when your members start to create little subcategories, or not categories, but subgroups inside of your community, you become very powerful. Lastly, or not lastly, because there's one more, but almost lastly, Put someone in charge of retaining, put someone in charge of implementing everything I just talked about in exchange for, let's say, 10% of all your sales or 20% of all your sales. Their job is to retain members. They can do everything and anything to retain members because they're getting commission. This only works once you have like, I'd say, 50 to 100 plus members. But once you get 50 to 100 plus members, Put someone in charge. Like this is your only job is to retain members. Don't let people leave. And that's their whole job. You don't have to worry about anything I just talked about. You should understand it, but you don't need to really master it. You can get someone else to master it. And you, get the, you can get them to go through um, all the training I've done on this because I've covered this retention topic a few times. Type a one in the chat if you'd love to implement number 25. Just get someone in charge. Give them some commission. That'd be amazing, right? Someone asked them, what do you do for work? I'm the head of retention at the Lucy Woods Institution. I'm the head of retention at Kelly's Club. Right? They're the head of retention. Boom. Nice label for them. Nice, nice title for them. Okay, finally, bonus mystery tactic. You could do onboarding calls. Private, don't have to be with you necessarily, but private one-on-one -on -one onboarding calls. This onboarding call, very simple, takes maybe five, 10 minutes. And when someone signs up, they book a call with you or someone on your team. And on that call, you... Get them to restate their goals. And then let's say, let's say their goal is they want to lose 15 pounds in the next two months because they got a uh, wedding coming up. You say, gotcha, 15 pounds in, in, in two months. 
He reassured them they can do it if it's possible. He said, you can definitely do that. All you have to do is go through this material right here and then show up to these calls. And then you show them, you screen share and you show them how to go through the program to achieve that result. So it's just like they've restated their goals. They got, they reminded themselves of why they signed up and now you show them exactly how to do it. And then you answer any questions they have. And after five, 10 minutes, cool, they're good to go. And you say, cool, I'll see you on the call. And you see them on the coaching call, the weekly call. It's, it's that simple. Like just that onboarding makes them feel like, oh, cool. Like this is, this is nice. I got to actually meet this person. I got to connect, show me what to do. And I, I got to restate my goal. You could also ask them this. You could also ask, you could get them to restate the goal, right? They're only 15 pounds in two months because they got a wedding coming up. And you ask them, why is that so important to you? It's important because boom, 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 boom. They give you all these reasons. And then you could say something like, what do you, what do you think? How do you think you'd feel? Or what do you think would happen if, if you didn't accomplish that and didn't lose any weight? They'd be like, oh my God, this would be so terrible. Blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, well, let's definitely make sure that doesn't happen. Let's definitely make sure you get that goal. We definitely can do it. All we got to do is go through this and hop on these calls. And then you can also plant the future for them too. And you can say, once you've gone through this, uh, I want you to take a really awesome after photo. I'm look, really looking forward to your after photo. But for, the, for us to get a really good after photo, we need a really good before photo. So before, um, right after we hop off this call, go and take an after photo and send it to me. Or before photo. Go and take a before photo and send it to me. Now they've got skin in the game. They just talked to you. They just promised that they're going to go take a before photo and they're going to send it to you. And then you reply back. You're like, oh my God, I can't wait for your after photo. It's going to be incredible. Countdown's on. Here's the link again to the module number one. They're, they're in now. Like how, how could they not be in? They sent you the before photo. You sent them the link. They told you why it's important. What's going to happen if they don't do it? Like the consequences. They're really, really, really bought in. So those are the 26 retention tactics. Good job. Good job, good job. We're going to take a little break and we're going to come back and we're going to get into um, something else. We need to the management. How to manage a community without a ton of time or content. Cool. Cool. Two minute break. I'll see you in two minutes.
All right. Before we move on, share your favorite tactic. Which was it? Was your number one tactic? I'll roll through them here for you. Which number? All time favorite of the 25. Right, says Christy. There we go. That makes sense. Number eight, solid. John's favorite is number 26. Wow. Good mystery bonus one then. 16. Makes sense. Slice is nine. Pipeline, yep. Well, my favorite is uh, number 25. Bam. Actually, I'm going to move it. There you go. Cool. 12, JK, number six. Ha, ha, ha. Cool. All right. Let's continue on. How to manage the community without a ton of time of content or time without a ton of time or content. Yes. So I actually made a document about this, which is like the whole purpose of management is retention and retention happens when there's usage and usage happens when there's progress, right? We just covered that. Progress happens various ways of making progress. You can make progress in relationships that you're having. Like maybe you're getting, you're getting to know someone more and more and more. You don't want to leave. Your status is going up, like maybe, maybe your status is going up because you're, um, you're you're in a new level, you know. You're 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 Vanda, like Vanda doesn't want to leave. She's ranked number one. Teresa doesn't want to leave. She's ranked number one. Right, her status is going up. Alana doesn't want to leave. Status is going up. That's another method, or another way of making progress. And then just goal achievement, like you're getting fitter, you're getting stronger, you're getting faster, you're getting more dates on Bumble or whatever you're using. Like progress is happening. So this is. This is why retention happens. Um, in terms of best practices for community management, you can either do this yourself or you hire someone to do this. But it's, community management is very, very simple. You, you, when someone joins, you auto DM them. So you can go on school and you can I hate to burst out your guys' bubble. You're like, wait, that was automated? Yeah, it was automated. We have a, uh, I'll show you the free one. The free group one says, Auto DM new members, and it says, boom. This is part of on this is part of the management. As soon as they join, boom, they're assigned to Amun. And he DMs them, welcomes them in, gets conversation going. Cool. Another way is just have an FAQ page. So have an FAQ page. I'll send you guys this. Check it out. Uh, whoops. Actually, you guys should like kind of just copy this FAQ page and make your own version. This way people don't keep asking the same questions over and over and over again inside your group. If someone does ask a question, you can just link them to the answer in the FAQ page. And then your course, if, if you have a free course, your free course, and this is again, this is part of the community management, but your free course should talk about why what you're doing is important. That way people don't question it. Right? What did we do yesterday? The very first, the start of this workshop yesterday, we spent like 20 minutes just on why community is so important, right? And over the past you know, few hours now, we've been going over uh, what, what exactly is involved. And then uh, the wow factors, like giving success stories. So in your free community, you should, you should focus on these things. And then you should invite people to your paid program. Like I talked about yesterday, when you do workshops in your free community, you invite people to join your uh, your free 14-day trial. Okay. 
And then your paid program, you, again, you talk about the why, what, wow, and, and how, like more details into the exact how, and they get more access to you or your coaches. Um, so in the free community, there's no access, there shouldn't really be any access to coaches. So you don't need to worry about like managing coach client interaction. It's only in your paid community that you're going to have some coaches. And for that, you just, you just have a simple calendar. You have a simple calendar with calls. This doesn't look too simple because I got stuff going on, but let's go back a, back a month. Boom, very simple call. Very simple calendar. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every second Saturday. They click here, they join the link, boom, done. So that's really not that difficult in terms of management. You just pay, you can pay your coaches whatever you want. Uh, we pay our coaches hourly and then we give them like a maximum. We say like ideally you do the calls in an hour, maximum two hours, but your calls should probably be like an hour long. And that's how you manage the coaches at the end of the month, they invoice you. And then um, you could do, like I said, weekly or monthly Zoom calls, you know, personalized Q&A. And again, that's just part of, that's just on your calendar. Nothing complicated there. And then you set aside time to answer community questions. You can either set aside time on your calendar or you just, I'm on school so frequently that I pop in your daily throughout the day, like this was supposed to two hours ago. I'll get to this later today, probably. Well, it's Sunday. I try not to. I try not to answer on Sundays, or even Saturdays, because if I reply on a Sunday, or Saturday, people then start expecting responses on Saturdays and Sundays. So, I try not to get into stuff Saturday, Sunday, unless it's like an emergency. But yeah, Monday to Friday, set aside time, go in there and answer community questions. And again, your community manager can do this for you. And then. You don't even have to do everything I just said. You can just get a uh, someone on your leaderboards. So you go to your leaderboards, and I could be like, hey, Vanda, do you want to be a community manager? And I'll give you free access to the membership, free access to the community. Or I'll even pay her. Be like, hey, Vanda, can I pay you like 1000 bucks a month or something to just manage the community or 500 bucks a month to manage the community? Right? She'd probably love that. So, yeah. Boom. It's pretty simple. That's community management. I don't know why people are like afraid to host a community. They think it's a lot of work. And in terms of content you're posting, it's this content's super simple. It's like once a week, maybe once a week. Um, in your in your paid community, you're gonna post something um of extra value, but you don't really need to because you're you're Calls are already creating your calls are already creating the value. Like you're, if you do, if you do freaking three to four calls a week, there's three to four posts a week right there. You just post the replay, boom, done. You don't really need to post any extra content besides this. Even if you're just doing a weekly call a week, that's totally fine. And then in your free, in your free group, you just want to, you know, you should already have a ton of free resources. Just remind people of it. Be like, hey, are you struggling with coming up with a webinar script? Here's a five-minute webinar script. Hey, are you struggling with coming up with email subject line? Here's 101 of the best email subject lines I've ever come up with. Hey, do you want to know the number one piece of advice from 21 millionaires? Here it is right here. Boom. And you just take your resources and you post it in the community. And they're like, oh, wow, thanks. Oh, well, wow, thanks. Oh, well, wow, thanks. Because most people are never going to go in here and, and dig and find it themselves. So you just pull it out of the treasure chest for you. Be like, hey, do you love telling stories? Do you wish you could tell better stories, make more money with it? Boom, here's a storytelling masterclass I created. That is all you need to do. Take your resources and post them here. Bada bing, bada boom. That's community management. Uber simple. I don't know why people think otherwise. Maybe because I've never seen it broken up, broken down like that. I'm not sure. In terms of, well, do you guys have any questions before, before we move on with community management? We're good. Type good if we're good. Type great if we're great. Great. All right. How to get your first 10 paying members. Okay. So yesterday I talked about 
What did I talk about? I talked about how you write a list of the 10 problems people have or 11 problems people have and 11 things people want. And then you make a free PDF and Google Doc talking about those things. <clears throat> and you grow your, your free community with that freebie. Okay, because the only way to get access to that document is by people joining your community. And then with your other 10 things that you came up with on that list, you do a live workshop helping people with that thing. And at the end of that workshop, you offer people a free 14-day trial to your community. It could be 30-day trial, 7-day trial, whatever. You offer them a free trial for your community where you can then work with them more closely. Right? So if you just do that, that alone is one way of getting some members into your community. Another way, though, that works really well, especially if you have a very, very small audience and you don't think you can even get people to attend a live workshop, is you can just do what I call hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is you just DM people. So we have a really effective DM framework. Let me actually grab that for you. This DM framework is so good. Okay, here it is. You can use this. So your, your first few clients, you, you it's, again, it's hand-to-hand -hand combat. You're going to have to like speak with them one-on-one -on -one to get them. But if they end up paying every month, then it's going to be worth it, right? So what you do is you get them to DM you for that free thing. Like let's say you create, come up with a guide. In fact, post in the chat right now your, your free guide name. Post in the chat your free guide name. What's your free PDF that you want to give away? Yesterday, we came up with a great example for this. Darlene was saying that she helps people with weight loss. And I was saying, okay, for a free guide for that would be something along the lines of like, how to achieve your sexiest body by summer. Or how to get a flat stomach and achieve your sexiest body by summer without ever experiencing cravings. Or something like that. So let's say if that's her PDF, she puts it out there and says, who wants this thing? Send me a DM with the word bikini. And all these women go, bikini, 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 bikini. Um, and she replies back with this script that we'll get into. Kelly says, how to be healthy without taking iron pills or supplements. Okay, so Kelly, uh, Kelly, <laughs> Kelly, and this goes for everyone. You never want to use the word healthy by itself. It's way too vague. It means nothing. Avoid it at all costs. What does it mean to be healthy? Nobody knows. So why say it? It doesn't, it doesn't resonate with anyone because it's too vague. If you want to say, for example, how to eliminate gut aches or how to eliminate bloating without taking iron pills or how to eliminate um, heavy periods without taking iron pills, right? Specify the issue. Healthy is not, let's get rid of that word. We can't use it by itself. You could say like, maybe like, um, when, when, when would the kid use healthy? Maybe you could say like how to have healthy, strong hair, right? Or how to have healthy, strong nails. But being healthy in general is not a thing. Let's just eliminate that from our marketing vocab. Um, so let's just pretend women hate taking iron pills, but they really want um, healthy, strong nails. You say how to have healthy, strong nails without taking those toxic iron pills. Lucy says, three secrets to break free from emotional blockage. Okay, so emotion, okay, um, three secrets to break free from emotional blockages. Yeah, but what sort of emotional blockages? Like, emotional blockages in general is kind of like being healthy, right? It's, it's kind of it's floating in midair. It's not attached to anything. So I'd say three secrets to achieving your let's for, for an example three secrets to creating your dream your dream business by overcoming emotional blockages right it's like well, we don't want to overcome the emotional blockage just for the sake of overcoming the emotional blockage we want to overcome it so that we can do something sam you got to change your chat settings to everyone but sam said how to use stoic journaling to improve your life yeah, we got to do a class on copywriting, guys. We got to do a class on That's going to be the next workshop. You guys want to do a workshop on copywriting? How to write copy that like resonates with people right away? 
Say yes if you want to do a copywriting class, and we'll teach you how to write stuff that makes people be like, yo, my God, I need that. Because there's frameworks for this stuff. How do you use stoic journaling to improve your life? Okay, the issue with that is that number one, no one knows or cares what stoic journaling is because you haven't told us. And number two, improve your life is the most vague thing I've ever heard in, in my life. So if someone comes up to you on the street and says, do you want to improve your life? you be like, yeah. Like, they'll be like, cool, five grand. you be like, go away, right? But if someone came up to you and was more specific and was like, do you want your dream soulmate who you're forever going to be in love with? You're going to be like, yeah. They're like, cool, five grand. You're like, cool, deal, right? Like you can make a deal with someone like that because it's something very specific, but improve your life is not specific at all. And no one knows what stoic journaling is because you haven't told us. Uh, so you could say like, for example, you could say how to attract your dream soulmate in less than seven days using some weird morning habit called stoic journaling. And now I'm interested. All of a sudden I'm interested. John says, I was thinking of free calisthenics workout program. Sure. It could be, you could say something like maybe like how I dropped 20 pounds of fat while putting on 10 pounds of muscle without a gym using this insane calisthenics program. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, well, anyways, copywriting aside, let's just pretend you all have an amazing free thing that people want. Because we're going to DM you for that free thing. Then you're going to say, uh, let's say John. Hey, John. Okay, we're going we're gonna to go with John. John's giving away a, a, a workout program, helping guys lose weight, build muscle. Hey, John. This is that question. So let's just um, create a clone here of this. You guys, wanna, you guys should write this down, by the way. Like, create your own version. Create your own script. Hey, John. This or that question. Um, okay, so you're going to send them the thing. Here's the free thing. You're not going to call it a free thing, but you're going to, you know, put in the blank. Here's the free thing. This or that. Um Will this, uh, have you ever tried calisthenics before for weight loss or will this be your first time? Right? So we have a, this or that question. Have you done this or this? Then the person's going to say something like, it will be my first time. Then encouraging statement. This, uh, cool. You'll definitely have a lot of fun. Make it about them, right? It's not like, cool, I think my program will be awesome for you. No, no, no one cares about you or your program. So what they only care about themselves. That's why people like the sound of their own names. Sam, John, right? Kelly, Trevor, Thomas. Ah, oh, my name. Cool. You will definitely have a lot of fun. Uh, with calisthenics, right? Make it about calisthenics, not the book, or not the program. And you'll probably see results in just 24 hours lol all right encouraging statements then you immediately go into what's your goal then you then you, you don't say do you have a goal you say something like um how much no yes or no questions you only ask one yes or no question that's down the road here in a sec how much muscle are you looking to gain and how much uh, we could say how much how much weight are you looking to drop my man because he's probably only working with men right how much weight are you looking to drop my man Something like that. 
Then the guy's going to say, Oh, I want to drop, I want to drop 20 kilograms as well. Then he says, gotcha, 20 kilograms. It's hundred percent doable. What seems to be slowing. By the way, you don't type this up every time. This is copy paste. Cause you're going to follow the same framework every time. You're going to copy paste, maybe make a couple adjustments. Like you're obviously going to adjust 20 kilograms. You're going to adjust nothing else. Actually, it's pretty much all copy paste. Like you're going to just minor things. Um, what seems to be slowing you down or preventing, preventing you from, uh, This assumes that something is slowing them down, which I don't like. So I'm trying to reword it, but um, yes, I will. What do you think might? What's causing you to fall off track or? There we go. If you don't mind me asking. So now he's going to say, my wife, my kids, Donald Trump, whatever. And you're going to say, Then you say, um, would it be, okay, so now at this point, by the way, we're only pitching this call. We're only going, we're, we're, we're asking our first yes or no question, right, at this point. But we're only asking the yes or no question because we now know exactly uh, what he wants, which he wants to drop 20 kilograms, and we know what's causing him to be stuck. So we know what he wants, and we know what's causing the, we know what's preventing it from happening. Now we say, um, would it be right here? Would it be helpful to hop on a quick 10 15 minute call to see how I can help you to see uh, a call to show you how you can drop 20 kilograms in 45 days? Um, while still being a and and having energy for your kiddos. Boom. What's he gonna say? How is he gonna say no to that? He just told me he wants to drop 20 kilograms. He just told me that the problems with the 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 the, the kids. And I'm like, dude. Would it be helpful hopping a quick 10, 15 minute call to show you how you can drop boom, 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 while still being family with the kiddos? Like, that's exactly what he wants to hear. You guys following? Type yes if you think this would work. Type yes if you think he would say yes. Yes. Okay. So this right here is like a quick little masterclass in, in appointment setting, but Everything I just typed up, you don't need to type up every time. You just copy paste it. Every time John gets someone who talks about, you know, um, wants to lose weight and his kids, whatever, just copy paste this, bam, done. Everything's copy paste. A couple adjustments here or there. He's going to say, yeah, he gets on a 15 minute call. On the 15 minute call, you, you go over the discovery call script that we have. And then you, uh, you can then let him know, be like, dude, I can. You know, I can definitely see you looking really, really good at, at um, 180 pounds. You said you're 205 right now. Well, you at 180 would be insane. Um, 
do you want to do a little experiment and work with me for free in exchange for a before and after photo that I can get some credit for? Like, give me a little testimonial. And you'd be like, sure, what do you mean? I'd be like, cool, I got this program where it's called um, the Make Gains Academy. And it's just 47 bucks a month, but I'll get you in there for free for 14 days. You can test, test run it. And we'll get you in there. We'll put you in the program, get you doing the workouts, get you drinking the, the juice. And after 14 days, I want to see an after photo. And if your after photo is sick, which it will be, send it to me. And then if you still want help, ongoing help, it's just 47 bucks a month thereafter for ongoing support, feedback, customization with your meal plan, training program, everything. The guy's going to be like, this is insane. I found the holy grail. I'm definitely in. Let's do it. Right? So you frame it as you want to work for free in exchange for testimonial. You guys, I just gave you pure freaking gold right here. This is, this is so effective. This is unbelievably effective. The only downside is that it takes a bit of time initially, but this shit adds up, right? If you do this like a hundred times, you're now at 44,700 4, bucks a month. Type 100 if you think you'd be willing to do this a hundred times and make five grand a month. Look at that, right? Now, the thing though is I just told you that I was going to show you how to get your first 10 paying members. I just, and you just agreed to doing it for a hundred. So this leads me to my next point, which is the roadmap for getting your first 200 members in 365 days is no different than getting your first 10 paying members. It's no different. You just have to keep at it. You just have to keep at it. That's the secret here. The roadmap for getting your first 200 members is the same as getting your first 10 paying members. You just have to keep at it. The only difference is you might delegate some stuff. So instead of you doing the calls, instead of you, instead of you doing the DMs, instead of you doing the calls, you hire someone to do it and you give them commission. That's it. It's the only difference. Once you start bringing in the money, you hire where it hurts. And you're like, I don't have all the time to do these calls, but I have the money now. So I just hire someone to do it for me. Bam, done. Cool. So yeah, uh, Sam saying, can I screenshot the template? I'll give you this template. I'll just share this with you. Screenshot, no, none of that stuff. Let me just give it to me. Oops. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So who type me if you found this DM framework thing really, really helpful? And you realize how simple it is now. Yeah. So here's an alarming fact. Here's an alarming fact. Over the past few months, we've done between 30 and 40 grand every month. It's like our, it's been our average for a while now, 30, 40 grand, all organic. All I do is I post a piece of content. We use that framework, we get them on a call and we get them on another call after that to sell them like our, our higher ticket program. But if they can't afford a higher ticket program, we just then downsell them into our membership, which is our community for 47 bucks a month using that script I just showed you there. So like all our DMs look the same. If I was to go through all of our DMs, we have like thousands of DMs now. They all look the exact same. We used to not know what we were doing. And so we tried a whole bunch of different shit. And then we started noticing, hey, everyone who seems to get on a call, they seem to follow the same freaking framework. And it's just like we're pressing like these psychological triggers. And if we don't press psychological triggers, it doesn't work. So it's like, that's why we just use the same script every single time. And so now whenever my team makes a sale, I don't, I don't even know about it half the time. I get notified later. Hey, the sale came in. Um, I asked them every time. I said, how'd you do it? What would you do? What'd you say? And they, they say the same thing every time. See, I stuck to the script. My team follows the script. If my team follows the script, do you think it'd be wise if you followed the script as well? I think so. I think so. I think it'd be very freaking wise if you followed the script. You just got to customize it. You obviously can't use like the exact script we use, but that framework, that framework is the key. And then you customize the framework, you make your own script, boom, good to go. So that is between what I shared yesterday and what I shared just now. That's it. Let me share with you this document, which has some links for everything. Everything we've gone over. I'm happy to do Q&A now. So post your questions in the Q&A and let's get to it. 
Uh, John says the workshops are for the paid group, not the free group, right? Your workshops initially should be the, for the free group. So things change in business as you evolve. So a lot of you guys will ask me questions and I have to make sure I, I make this clear. Things will change in business as you, as you evolve, as your business grows. Initially, you're going to do things one way and then later you're going to do them a different way. So initially, your workshop should be free. Why? Because you don't have anyone in your paid group. Why would you do a workshop in front of like two people? That's silly. So do a workshop in your free group. You want minimum like three people there. I would do a workshop in front of three people, but two people, that's kind of weird. I, yeah, I wouldn't do it. If you want like three people in the workshop, that's fine. So do your workshop and for your free group initially, just build those assets in front of your free group. Free workshops allow you to pitch people into your paid workshop or sorry, into your paid community afterwards. Um, John says, curious, what workshops would you go in the community? Is it the membership launch challenge the best way to find info for the paid group content? You, the paid group content. Okay, I, I, I'll answer this question. I think a lot of people are wondering this too. The paid group content and the free group content. There's a difference. I've said this a few times. The free group content should just be videos explaining why what you teach is important. Like tell me like for the stoic example, right? Why is stoicism important? Why is stoic journaling important? Tell me why, sell me on it, right? Sell me why it's important. Then tell me what it involves. And then give me, give me some wild factors. Give me some wild stories. Tell me about how Harry started using the Stoic journaling and Susan started using Stoic journaling and Peter started using Stoic journaling, right? And then let me know, hey, if I want help implementing on the Stoic journaling practice, I can attend this workshop or I can sign up for this free 14-day trial and get help there, right? That's all the free content needs to be. The paid content should just go into much more detail on how, like tell me like what I should write in my journal, what journal should I use, what pen should I use, what time of day should I, I do the journaling? Give me some more examples of some different um, you know, frameworks I can use inside my journal. Like that, the, de like the nitty gritty stuff, like we're talking about here today, like very nitty gritty. Like I'm, I'm telling you literally what to say word for word, right? On that script. I wouldn't do that for free. You guys paid for this. It's way too advanced for free. Way too advanced. I mean, I don't mind giving away for free, but it's pointless because it's they're not it's a waste. They're not going to go through it. I don't want to waste premium quality material on people who aren't going to go through it. So keep your paid content for the nitty gritty stuff only for like the geeks like you guys who want to really geek out and like master this stuff. I'm a geek too, so I can call you a geek. Uh, keep the paid stuff for those people. Free stuff should be much more high level. Very inspiring content in the free. Thomas has a question. How soon after they receive the freebie do you DM them? You go like this. Hey, John, here's the free thing. This or that question? Like that. So you DM them with the free thing. So that's that. And when you DM them, guys, there's so many different ways. You could just DM them like a Google Doc, right? It lands it lands on a page like this or whatever. Or you could send them to something like um, like a funnel, right? You could send them, send them here. And then they opt in, they get on your email list, they start getting automated emails from you. When they're on emails, they automate emails. They, from those emails, they can attend your live workshops. They can also, from this, uh, from this funnel, they can then get into your... Mm. They, can then, they can then get into your community, right? Bam, 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 bam. It's like, hey, join my, join my Facebook group or join my school group or whatever, right? So you just got them from your social media into your, into your community. This could also lead to a school group, of course. So you're funneling people from your social media via a freebie into your community now, 
and on your email list. And when you got people in your email list, your community, like we talked about yesterday, you are in a power position. Very, very powerful position. Um, if, if you want help setting that up, by the way, that whole flow, you can visit 14minutecall.com. You can speak with one of our head coaches. We can talk about how we can build that out with you live on Zoom. That free 14-minute call is, um, is a, it's with one of our head coaches, Benny, and uh, he'll walk you through what it looks like to work together and how we can set everything up. So you can have everything set up in less than two days, ready to rock and roll with everything we just talked about over the past couple of days. John says, uh, so free stuff is why it works and examples of it working and paid stuff is how to actually implement. Yes, yes, totally. Yeah, like it doesn't make sense to give away free content on how to actually implement unless you're teaching them something like really basic, like how to freaking know if a banana is ripe or something, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or how to, how to peel a banana, like basic stuff. I'm sure you can teach for free, but anything advanced charge for it. People are willing to pay for it. People are willing to pay for it. I've made this mistake myself. I get, I've given out so much advanced training in the past and it just falls on deaf ears. They're just not right. People aren't ready for it. It's too advanced. But when you pay for it, you pay attention. Yeah. And if, and here, and here's the other thing too. Here's another way of thinking it. If you teach people all like the how to and the nitty gritty how to stuff in your free content, they're going to feel like they don't, need you, which is a fallacy because of course they need you because you know way more than they do. And now they have this false sense of thinking that they need know everything they need to know. They're going to go on to try and be successful on their own. And then they're going to fall and get eaten by a tiger and die all because you gave them this false sense of security. You gave them this false sense of here's everything you need to succeed, but it's not true. Deep down, you know that they need way more help. So don't give them a false sense of security. Don't give them a false sense of hope thinking like, here's everything you need to succeed. And, in a 14 minute YouTube video, they need ongoing support. They have a million freaking questions. And you're going to give them that false sense of hope if you teach them like really nitty gritty stuff. But what you'll do alternatively, if you do it right, you show them why it's important, what's involved, and like make them go, wow, how do I get started? Wow, how do I get some help? And then you inspire them and that makes them want to work with you for free for 14 days. And then from there, you can show them nitty gritty stuff. If they really like it, they can, they, then they can pay. Cool. Well, that's it. That's it, ladies and gents. Thanks so much for coming. Today was fun. Yesterday was fun. Before we wrap up, I would like to know your key takeaway from today. One big aha, big moment. Key takeaway. You guys shared some awesome ones yesterday, which I appreciate the key takeaways you shared yesterday. I'm curious what your key takeaways for today are. I'm going to bring on a guest. Bring on a guest. Introduce yourself. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, Woodleen. Um, what do I say, Ted? I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I want to hear your key takeaway. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Actually, it's actually one of the last few things that you just said. It's like people are willing to pay. And I really undervalue myself sometimes. I'm like, oh, maybe they don't have the funds. Maybe they're not going to pay. But it's just an aha moment for me. People are actually willing to pay. So I just put it in bold in my notes right now. People are willing to pay. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you didn't attend yesterday, I don't think, right? No, I wasn't here yesterday. I have okay. to watch the replay. Yeah, watch the replay because yesterday was all about how to actually make a bunch of sales without mm. selling. Mm. It was about how to actually make a bunch of sales while giving away stuff for free. So today we talked about, yeah, people are willing to pay, but yesterday we we're saying like way more people are actually willing to get it for free mm. and then pay later. Got it. So... 
like think about this if i was to say hey you know you you could you could um you can work with me for free for 14 days and then only after 14 days if you really like it then you pay sound good yeah you'd be like that sounds amazing <laughs> right and that's all a free 14 day trial is absolutely so all you have to do is promote the free 14 day trial and then only if people like it they pay and you don't even have to mention like you don't even have to try and sell them any because you're giving them a free 14 day trial. Hmm. So, uh, but yeah, no, for pe people are willing to pay, uh, especially this is, you got I know you underlined people are willing to pay, but you, an asterisk, but especially when you lead with free. Got it. Especially when you lead with free. Yeah. But, 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 but for example, for this workshop, we gave people the option, right? We gave people, we said, well, hey, you're going to pay $49 to get this workshop. Or you can get it for free on a 14 day trial and then pay $47 mm. a month. And still we had a bunch of people sign up for 49 bucks. Awesome. So people, even, even given the choice between free and pay now, people are still willing to pay now, mm. but you don't even have to try and like push it. You know, in fact, like you could say, Hey, here's the paid thing, but then you put way more emphasis on the free, 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 free. And people will still take, the pay, <laughs> you know? love it so thank you yeah cool anyways thanks for hopping on and, thank you uh, so much <laughs> and yeah you you're you're uh did, did you listen to the audio i sent you yesterday i did <laughs> oh okay so share with us your key takeaway from the audio and t tell the audience first what the audio was called oh the strangest secret and um Oh my God, there was a lot of things, but I was doing something when I was listening to it. Oh my God. Oh, ask me the question again. I'll come back and I'll give you more tips because I didn't even write them down, but I've learned a lot. I've did, learned you, a lot. Did, did you like The Stranger's Secret? I did. I did. And I'm willing to really listen to it for the next 13 days. <laughs> okay. Every, well, yesterday didn't count. Do 14 days starting today. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, for the next 14 days. You guys, thank, thanks. Thanks, Orlan. Appreciate that. Thank you. You guys, uh, go here. Listen to this every day for 14 days. Kelly, um, not yet, but you can do it on Stripe very easily. Yeah, not yet. You can do it on Stripe very easily. Stripe allows you, when you go to create a product on Stripe, it allows you to add a 14 day trial. Um, is the replay live on the group now? Yes, it is. Yeah, you just go to Contempreneurs. One day you want to replay right there, bam. Key takeaway from Darlene is find your 10 true regulars and start them slowly, just do it. Yes, yes, yes. How do you track commissions to pay the referral bonus uh, from referral business? Uh, there's different softwares you can use depending on which referral software you're, you're using. You can do referrals with system. System allows you to do referrals. Um, is there an option? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a bit tricky, Lucy, unfortunately. Um, but there is a way there are ways, but Lucy, the uh probably the simplest one yeah there's yeah i was gonna say it, it's usually not something you need to do right away anyway like it's it's not like a proof of concept type of thing yeah exactly something to deal with later yeah cool all right gang well this was super fun and i appreciate you coming spending your weekend with me I will see you all inside of school. And next class, we'll do a copywriting. I'm stoked on that. In the meantime, I'll give you, I'll give you, well, I already gave you something to do. Well, listen to that. Listen to that uh, link I sent you by Earl Nightingale every day until then. All right. And next class, we'll do copywriting. In the meantime, though, if you want to do research on copywriting, by all means, do it. it, it it's one of, it's like, it's, it's a very, very valuable skill, knowing how to type things. Do I have anything on here? Copywriting. 
classroom. I'm a copywriter. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, I've got I've got an awesome copywriting video. I want to give it to you guys just in case. Just in case there's someone gung-ho right here, this video could change your life. Okay, here we go. I don't know what's in this, but I assume it's good because I made it. <laughs> I'm vouching for myself on this one. I really don't know what's in it. When did I even make this? So, oh, that one. Okay, that one's good, but I think I have another one too. Copywriting. Start with that one and then just do some research on Google. How to write good copy if you want to get good at it, but it's a skill. It's a skill, it's a skill, it's a skill. Just try to always start. Here's the bottom line. Bottom line, here, two tips, okay? Two, two, or I'll even ask you. Do you guys want my top two copywriting tips right now? Just two tips to get started that make you instantly better, guaranteed. Okay. Number one tip. The next time, the next time you read something that's really good, it makes you click or makes you go like, wow, or makes you want to buy it or whatever. Do what I've always done in the past and still do to this day oftentimes, but definitely in the past when I was starting out. You copy it, you paste it, and then you rewrite it a little bit so that it's yours and you realize, wow, that's really freaking good. Done. Just even if it's, a, if it's a whole email, it's like, wow, it's a really good email. Copy it, paste it, rewrite it. Boom. I did this for so many years with my favorite copywriter that eventually I didn't need to copy paste anymore. I just started writing my own as and it, and it had, a, you know, my own was hundred percent me, but it just subconsciously like had his, um, you know, his magic in it still somehow. Cause I was so programmed to write like him that eventually years later, like five years later, I started working with his agency and I sent out an email that I wrote one morning. And someone from his agency emailed me back and said, um, hey, Ted, nice email. Looks like ours, wink. And I'm like, what do you mean? And I wrote back, I was so confused. I was like, what do you mean looks like ours? And he's like, it looks like you just copy pasted one of ours and changed it. And I was like, dude, that's a hundred. That one was a hundred percent me. I was like, I used to copy paste email like back in the day, but like this one, I legit wrote all me. But it's just, I had been so programmed, so trained to write like this one email copywriter that Someone from his agency thought I actually copy pasted and rewrote it. So that's how powerful this is. You can get so good that you can just write emails from scratch if you copy paste enough of them and, and rewrite them. It's, it's a, it, some of the most famous writers in the world, I don't know who exactly, maybe Stephen King, maybe J.K. Rowling, whatever, what they would do is they'd read their favorite writers and they would rewrite word for word what their favorite writers had written. This is a famous copywriting trick. Before they had copy pasting, they would just literally rewrite it word for word. And then they would change it. So that's tip number one. Is that a good tip? Rewrite? Copy paste, rewrite? Yeah? Okay. Game changer. That instantly will make you really, really good. Second way to be really, really good, if you're just like freestyling some captions or headlines or whatever really quickly, is just always ask yourself, is it about them, audience member? And specifically, is it about, is it talking about their problem slash pain point? problem slash pain point? Is it talking about a problem slash pain point that they know they have? And, or is it also talking about like a desire that they have? So I could say, do you want a flat, sexy stomach? That's a desire. Or I could say, are you embarrassed to wear your bikini at the beach because of the blubber that hangs over your waist? That's a pain point, right? So both strike chords and you combine them. Be like, do you want a flat, sexy stomach at the beach this summer, but you're currently afraid to wear a bikini because of the blubber that hangs over? 
that used to be uh, last summer. That was me. This summer, I finally have my dream body. How did I do it? Well, it only took me 90 days. If you want to know exactly what I did in those 90 days, without any calorie restriction, without any exercise, send me a DM with the word love, and I'll send you the program for free. You combine that with a before and after photo, game over. You win. Game over. Because you talked about something super dope, super like attractive, and something super painful, super dark. Left a little bit of mystery in there. Made it sound effortless. You also got to make it sound effortless. And then um, say, send me a DM. I'll send it to you for free. Like, how could they say no? Especially if your audience is that people, is that kind of person. Right? Cool. All right. Way off topic, but uh, I had to pull it in because you guys got to write good freebies. Freebies, freebies, freebies. If, you, if, if you're going to make 510K a month without selling something, you need to know how to write good copy at least. That's one caveat here. Because you got to give away free stuff. And you got to convince people to take, their, take the free stuff. Cool? Cool. All right. Ciao for now. Much love. Love y'all. I'll see you in school. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye.